Good morning. I'm sorry I'm not joining you in person, but I'm certainly here in spirit. I want to say thank you to Drs. Vitaly Kessel, as well as Sue Plant and Vicki Tannenbaum for helping to organize this conference. This lecture will be on the guide to tearing of the shoulder labrum. So as we start to understand what is the shoulder labrum, on this slide here you can see a cadaveric image and then a real human image. The shoulder labrum is thickening of the capsule and creation of ligaments within the shoulder. These ligaments help keep the shoulder stable. On this cadaveric image, uh, you can see all different 360 degrees of labrum tissue. And then in this real image that I can see over here, this is a human labrum, which is that thickened, slightly reddened portion within the shoulder joint. The shoulder labrum, while it does its job in keeping the shoulder stable and from dislocating or being painful, can tear. In this cartoon image, we can see that the labrum has torn away from the bone and the suction cup concept is broken. This image of a real patient just right next to it shows you this labrum not attached to the bone so that it again is torn. So a cadaveric or rather a, 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 a cartoon and a real image of the labrum. So who gets labrum tears? Well, as it turns out, a lot of people. Of course, we talk about baseball players, volleyball players, and even golfers, but certainly I see it in firefighters and police officers and recreational and weekend warriors just the same. When I examine a patient with a labrum tear, I want to understand what's happening. I want to understand, is there a problem mostly from instability, like this person's whose shoulder it slides out right at the bottom, or is it just pain? Because each of those things will guide on how I do that. Does the shoulder dislocate? There are times where I can actually dislocate the shoulder in the office. If you don't like looking at these videos, you may want to look away, but this person, he can stand there awake, pop his shoulder out of socket, not even be that uncomfortable, boom, and pop it right back into socket. So I want to understand this in the office. If I think about the labrum a little bit like a clock face, from 12 o'clock all the way back up to 11.59, I'm going to classify the labrum into three basic areas. The superior labrum between 11 and 2, the anterior or front labrum between 2 and 6, and the posterior or back labrum between 6 and 12. And as it turns out, depending upon what sport you play, I may be able to predict where your labrum tear occurs with throwers having tears in the superior labrum more frequently than the contact or collision athletes having anterior labral tears. So let's begin, since we're talking about a guide to the labrum, with the superior labrum, the tears that happen between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. These happen in pitchers, javelin throwers, tennis players, volleyball, water polo. The majority of superior labral tears are treated non-surgically. It may take a few months, three or four, of intensive rehabilitation, which starts with your core and then moves up to your scapula and then your rotator cuff, but we try and treat them non-operatively. Unfortunately, there are a portion of people who will come to surgery. Here you're looking at a human image of a college athlete with a superior labral tear. I was just using that metal probe to probe on the top of the superior labrum. And what I have to do in those cases, unfortunately for the patient, but really good in the end, is to repair, to stitch around the labrum and take it from being an unstable fragment to a labrum that's affixed back to the bone that can have its suction cup. And we're gonna review and go over the same principle as part of the guide to the labrum. Let's go back to the clock face. I talked a little bit about the superior labrum, but now I want to talk about the anterior labrum, the two o'clock to six o'clock area. That two to six area is the part of the shoulder, the anterior labrum, or the bank cart tear, that tears when the shoulder gets dislocated. And the typical athlete is going to be a football player or a lacrosse player or another type of collision athlete that's had an event. The shoulders come out of socket, the athlete's aware, the firefighter's aware. Sometimes they've been to the emergency room to put that back into socket. I will examine that patient, I will understand their tear, I will probably at some point get an MRI, and when you get to the operating room, you can see the shoulder pops out the front, and then boom, back in. Out, locked out, and then Bang, back in. So this person has a very unstable shoulder. And that would have been helped diagnosed by an MRI scan before. 
The basic principle, as you saw with the superior name, is to capture the tissue. Whether I use these cinching stitches, these simple stitches, or these tape stitches, what I want to do is affix it back into place at a number of different points. And if I can do that, I can then secure that labrum and restore the suction cup. Here's an example of actual surgery where I'm looking down and on the left-hand side closer to us is the is the glenoid or the bone, and on the right is this torn labrum. And I'm mobilizing and sort of freeing up that labrum, and I'll slowly work on that such that I can then take the labrum and restore it and put it back onto its anatomical spot. I'm going to clean up and make the, make the area or the recipient area as perfect as possible, and I'll use a burr so that it's got fresh edges of bone so that I can really get it to heal on very nicely and I'll be able to pull back up on it, and you can see that's the labrum there, detaching the bone, I'm gonna put it back on. And then you see in the cartoon over on the rash, on the clinical image on the right, of the labrum that's actually completely repaired. Sometimes I can get tricky and use smaller, finer devices, and this is another type of anchor going in, and you'll see me here use this small passing hook. And this is how I can build a ship within the bottle. Here's how I can get into your shoulder, reach in, grab that labrum, so I'll grab it with a small device here, and now I'm gonna pass a sharp needle through this, through the labrum, there's that sharp needle, and that's how I can get around it, and then a little loop will come out, and I'm able to shuttle these stitches. It's certain, it's very elegant, you can see that it's very little bleeding, it's, a, it's quite an attractive procedure. I'll get to the point where it's all passed around, and now I'll finally, I'll tension that labrum up into place, and here with this new technology, and I with no knots, boom, you can see I'm slowly cinching it up into place, and as I cinch it into place, that labrum gets restored or fixed back up against the glenoid bone. Once again, restoring the suction cup and restoring the stability of this shoulder. We move on now from superior to anterior, now to posterior label tears. You may recognize this athlete who recently had a posterior label repair on his left arm and is currently returned back to play. The posterior labrum is gonna be diagnosed just like the superior and the anterior with an MRI scan. And here in this example of the MRI scan, you can see the ball, you can see the socket, and then around the back, right where this white arrow is, you can see the dye leaking out underneath the posterior labrum, diagnosing that tear. When we see this in the operating room, in the first slide that you saw, here's an athlete whose shoulder comes out the front and goes back in, out the front and goes back in. In the posterior labral tears, the athletes aren't always as unstable, but they can have shoulders that pop out the back. So here he's out the back and pop. He goes back in. He'll come out the back and pop. He'll come back in. So now you've seen an example of the shoulder popping out the front and the back. It can get more challenging when the athlete has a shoulder that pops in and out front and back both. Here you can see a good look at a torn posterior labrum, that same sort of hook or tissue that I'm gonna to use to pass stitches around the labrum and then affix it back into place. And here's the final result. You can see the cartoon where the labrum is cinched and tied to the bone. Here, in an image of that same athlete, you can see these six stitches that have riveted him back onto bone, and he's went back to playing Division I lacrosse at a top 10 university. There are some pitfalls we have to be careful of. Not every dislocation is a labrum tear, and we have to watch out because unfortunately we get to see patients who have had previous labrum surgery and aren't doing as well as we expected. The per first pitfall is a true tear of the capsule. This is called a humeral avulsion, and what you see here is the capsule of the humerus is not attached to the bone. So actually, the labrum is okay, but the other side, the, tar the side that attaches to the humerus, not the glenoid is torn. And we want to be careful not to miss Hegel tears and capsule tears. And we see capsule tears in elite baseball players and elite tennis players, and fix them, and they can return back to being very effective as well. Very common after a lot of dislocations, you know, maybe as few as two or three, the bone can start to get eroded. And once again, we'll see patients who've had surgery somewhere else, and unfortunately, they've had bone loss. So we are able to reconstruct the same way I can repair the labrum, I can repair the bone. Here's an example of cadaveric bone, and I'm gonna carve out and actually create a new labrum on the socket side. If the bone loss isn't on the socket side, or it's on the socket and the humerus both, in addition to repairing the, the, the socket, in this case you can see, I went ahead and repaired the ball, where on this x-ray you see a big divot, and I'm able to carve 
in and sculpt in a piece of bone to repair this missing uh, defect in the, in the humerus. Finally, we can't forget as orthopedic surgeons, we see bone injuries, bones break, and not every dislocation is actually a, a labrum tear. Here's an example of a poor person, uh, an unfortunate person, who dislocated their shoulder. It actually fractured and went out the back, as you can see in this CAT scan, and it wasn't picked up. We had to, had to go in there at three months afterwards and repair that later on. So we've been around the world, if it were, or around the clock. We've talked about the superior labrum in baseball and overhead throwers, water polo players. We've talked about the anterior, two to six o'clock labrum that I see in shoulder dislocations. And finally, we've talked about the posterior labrum that can be in batters or can be in golfers or other, other athletes. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the guide to the, 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 the guide to the shoulder labrum.